Have you ever been curious about how Spotify generates song recommendations for its millions of users? It would be impractical for the service to employ individuals to create personalized playlists for each user on a weekly basis. Instead, Spotify employs an unsupervised machine learning algorithm to provide song recommendations to its users. In this Python tutorial, we will demonstrate how to implement one such unsupervised learning algorithm, known as k-means. For a conceptual explanation of how the k-means algorithm works, check out the video in the video description below. First off, I'll be showing you how to use Google Colab, which is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control enter or Command enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark right here. You can add cells by clicking on this button in the upper left over here, and delete it by clicking on this trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Control M Z on your keyboard. We'll then import the libraries that we'll need for this project. To do so, you just need to run this cell. Then we'll load the data set into the notebook. To do so, you can also just run this cell as cell. We can check what the data set looks like by using the head function. Let's take a moment to examine the features in our data set. We can see we have 24 features over here that span the entire data set, and we can see the names of each feature called artist, track, album, album type, and so on. For a more in-depth explanation of each of these features, check out the project information in the description below. Next, we'll start pre-processing the dataset, or getting the data ready for training. You can read more about why we need to pre-process our dataset in the project instructions. First, we'll drop our not a number values, or NAN. NAN means that there is missing or incomplete data. Missing data can often lead to bias or inaccurate results in many machine learning model predictions. So by removing them, it often improves the overall quality of the data set. All we need to do is to run the cell to drop the NAN values. We can see here that before removing the NAN values, we had 20,594 rows, and after dropping it, we have 20,592. Then here you'll need to add in the features or columns that you want to drop in this list. We have already given the names of the features that we will drop in the project instructions, as well as the reasons as to why we are dropping them. Make sure to type these in exactly as you see them in the data frame. Next, we will normalize the features since k-means is a distance-based algorithm, and scaling it ensures that no particular feature outweighs the other. After using the describe function, we can see that some features are already within the range of 0 to 1 including danceability, energy, speechiness, and so on. So we can exclude those features from this step. We'll be normalizing our other numerical features, which are specified in the project instructions. Add the feature names to this list and run the cell. You can now see that after checking what our data frame looks like, all of our features that we specified here are now between the values of 0 and 1. There are many strategies to determine the optimal number of clusters. We'll use a technique called the elbow method. We'll first define a function that will help us work out the optimal number of clusters. And all you need to do is run this cell here. And this cell here. To find the optimal number of clusters, we need to find the crook of the elbow. which in this case seems to be 3. Finally, we'll apply k-means clustering to the dataset. To do so, just add in the number of clusters here, which we decided from the elbow method would be 3. We can visualize the model by running this code here. We can see here that our songs have been sorted into 3 clusters. Our song recommended our function will recommend five other random songs that belong to the same cluster. So if we inputted a song that has been categorized into green, the recommender will output five other songs of the same cluster. We have already provided the functions for our song recommender, so all you need to do is to run these two cells. Try inputting popular songs that you like.
We have also provided a song randomizer function, which purposely chooses songs outside of the cluster of the song you input. This function serves for comparison to see if the recommender function actually does a better job of recommending songs than a randomizer does. Now, to compare the two functions, invite your friends to help you out with this part. Input one song that you like in the recommender function and give these five songs a listen. You can look up these on either YouTube or Spotify. Record the portion of songs that you like. So if you like four out of five of them, input 4 out of 5 or 0 0.8 here. And do the same for the random songs function as well. Then after you repeat the experiment a couple times and add in more data points as so, you can compare the accuracies just by running this code here. And in this case, we can see that the recommender was actually more accurate than the random songs. And with that comes the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.